Okay, so a quick, really shaky video about about the battery on the fire truck. We've uh, had a, a battery donated. Brad donated a battery. Thank you very much, Quacha, from the auction up the road. And so we need to get that in, and then we'll be able to start the truck without jumping it, without jump starting it, which is uh, that's going to be quite pleasant. So found a few tools. Need to find the uh, battery terminals because Jonty donated some battery terminals. Thanks, Jonty. That's going to make it uh, a whole bunch easier as well. So let's see if we can do this quick. Okay, so first things first, these terminal clamps seem to be powder coated. So we need to get the coating out of that so it can make decent contact, of course, on both sides. Hopefully with the powder coating being there, it'll keep them a little free of the usual corrosive buildup from the, the acid. Well, in that environment anyway. Good enough. Now this one's a bit better. Doesn't seem to have suffered the same fate as the positive one. It's got less paint on the inside, which is good. And there goes the bird. Crazy as usual. Getting the old one out. And then we're going to have to clean off the, the positive lead because it's got a whole bunch of buildup on it, even though I clean, cleaned it off last week. So we're going to have to strip that out nicely and clean it off properly. And that's one of the reasons we need to change the terminals is that whoever worked on this last was a bit of a cowboy and uh, put a set of clamps on it that were too small which is a bit short-sighted anyway so there we go bit of a tip if you don't know about batteries and about all of that corrosion that occurs from all the acid all of that white dust Whatever you do, do not inhale it, because the next day you'll be coughing. You will have, it seems to be the quickest way to getting flu that I know of. And you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to obviously inhale it anyway, but you should take, you should take extra care, because the effects are really not good. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see it from over there, but all of this build up here, we'll soak that in some bicarb and some water, some hot water with some bicarb. And hopefully that'll chew it up, get rid of it. Oh, all right, let's use proper English here. Neutralize it. And then we won't have to be worrying about... Well, let me bring the camera a bit closer, then you can see what it does. Okay, so you can see, you can see all of this stuff here. I don't know if you can see it there, but all that white stuff floating off, all the dust. I don't know if you can see it there, bubbling away. But hopefully the bicarb will have the effect of neutralizing all of that corrosive nonsense. And uh, then we'll be a little bit better for the future. 
and we'll slap a bit of grease over these things as well just to exclude some oxygen which will also help the other side is okay that seems to not be a problem I'm pleased to say so I'm going to move the camera out the way so we don't get stuff on, on the camera that we don't want on the camera. And then, then we'll carry on. And then what we're going to do is on the terminal here, on the inside, because it's uh, you can see it's also powder coated there, we're just going to take some of that coating off so it can make decent continuity. See these are aluminium or aluminium if you uh, if you're from America. So anyway, it's going to get enough conductivity anyway through the clamp. In theory. As we all know, theory doesn't always work in practice. Right, eventually we'll get there. idea here is obviously to tighten them down evenly don't behave like a gorilla and over tighten one especially with it being a cast aluminium clamp or die cast okay looks like it'll work For those of you that don't know about terminal clamps, there is a, a square side on the bolt and obviously that rides on that little flat over there. So if you have to do this, make sure you don't put it in from that side where it's got nothing to stop it rotating. Obviously when you pull it tight, that's to stop it rotating there. Okay, pretty, pretty obvious, pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> We're going to leave the negative terminal on there, the clamp, because that's actually in okay condition. And this is Sod's Law. <laughs> this is where the battery doesn't fit because it's two millimeters bigger. I don't believe it. I don't bloody believe it. All right, well, we'll get back to this. Obviously, not all batteries are made equal. We'll get back to this. A little bit of trimming, and that's all working now. It's uh, essentially the same basic size, but um, with a little bit of a foot on it. Anyway, that's going to work. Clamp it all back down here. Not 
going to go anywhere. Okay, that's about that. Cool. Let's see if it'll start. Let's put a bit of a bit of this on here. It's messy as all hell, but it does help in the long run. Just to exclude some of the stuff that'll make it oxidize. Hopefully. Yeah, it's not ideal, but that's what we've got to work with at the moment. Right, let's see if it'll start. Okay. Oh, I suppose a key would help, eh? Okay, so let's see if it works. Uh, we're probably going to get three cubic meters of smoke. Hopefully. That's a good thing. It's a that's that's a very good thing. Quacha, uh, thank you for the battery. It's much appreciated. Jonty, thanks for the terminals. Uh, for those of you that are watching this that don't know what this is, this is the fire truck, the uh, Hellfire. It's a community fire truck, so yeah, fixed by the community, paid for by the community. And yeah, it's done some work. So at least at least we can start it now without having to to jump start it with another with another vehicle. So that's great. One more thing done, I guess, for the day.